Did you ever wonder what all the talk is about in regard to peak detect on digital oscilloscopes or coniscopes? Well, fret no more. Today I'm going to show you what peak detect is all about and why it is important. As simple talking about theory is boring, we are going to use a little practical example here. I recently had to purchase an Arduino 101 for one of my clients and was unhappy about the very long time wasted during the startup of its operating system. And so I decided to create a little routine which essentially, after starting up, sets the pin 13 to be an output and emits a little jiggle. And my idea was that we would track this jiggle on an oscilloscope and find out how long a real-time operating system takes to start up. As you can see here, the Arduino is currently powered off. Now I'm connecting it and we see, tada, the power supply has jumped. And now we have to wait. Hmm, nothing there. That's not nice. Let's try it again. Bye bye. And hello. Another seven seconds and no spike again. That's weird. With that, it's time to take a look at the pulse. As you see here, my combiscope is waiting to acquire data and I'm now resetting the Arduino. And we see, tada, the trigger light went off and the pulse has been acquired. And now we can use the cursors to find out just how long the pulse is. And we see here, we've got a 2.4 microsecond pulse. This thing is positively tiny. This broadcast needs to be interrupted for a short TSA, a TAM service announcement. I put loads and loads of time into these videos, at least one hour cutting, filming, setting up the experiments, everything. And I love doing it. I do it all for you. I've got one request. It takes you five seconds to subscribe to my channel and another five seconds to like my video. And it takes 30 seconds to share the video with one of your friends or write a nice comment. So please guys, motivate me and help me and be nice. Subscribe, like and share. You see here, we've got a total of 10 boxes and we've got a theoretical maximum memory of 500 kilo points in dual channel mode. So this tells us that for each one of these boxes, we've got but 50 K points, which according to Nyquist's theorem, limits us to just 25 kilohertz sampling rate. But as we saw, our pulse is much, much faster. So it's very likely that the pulse simply occurs between two acquisitions and never ever shows up. Having agreed that we cannot leave the ADC running at full speed all the time, a different solution needs to be found. In a non-peak detect oscillograph, usually either the clock of the ADC is slowed down or random sampling is being performed. So this means that essentially if we have some 128 samples, any one of them is grabbed and committed into the memory. Peak detect solves it in a more intelligent fashion. Namely, the ADC is always running at its maximum sampling frequency and the data is being reduced in an intelligent process, namely called peak detect. And how this peak detect process works, we are now going to see in an example frame. 
let us assume that all the data on top of the screen has been collected by the ABC and must be collated into only one data point, which will then be shown on the screen. In the case of peak detect, an algorithm runs over all of these samples and selects the highest one, which in our case would be 255 right here. So as you can see, if this is the little spike, this spike gets captured. Whereas in the case of random selection, any one of the other numbers has just as much of a chance to be selected as this one. As there has been quite a bit of discussion about how to activate peak detect on these LeCroy 9300 series scopes, I'm now going to show you the sequence. You see that currently we are in the auto roll mode. So the first thing we do is we press the time base setup button. And we set channel use to peak detect. Be careful. The moment peak detect is enabled, there is no more automatic updating. In the next step, we check the trigger and we see that everything is correct. And then we go and trigger the unit. And now we have to wait. And wait and wait. And as we can see here, the unit has been triggered and after triggering, it returns the data. And the spike is now perfectly visible and we can even count the time which has passed by using some cursors. Stop it. Cursor. Cursor for time. And now let's drive our cursor along to see the time taken for startup, which is 7.7 .7 seconds. So, as you could see, this spike, which was invisible before, was made visible by peak detect. So, with that out of the way, it's time to perform some closing thoughts. Should you always turn on peak detect? Well, the answer is, it depends. As you've seen in the case of the LeCroy 9300, the scope slows down significantly. Other more modern scopes from some vendors don't slow down as much. But in general, turning peak detect on makes the most sense whenever there is a very large discrepancy between the equivalent sampling rate which is constrained by the memory of your oscilloscope and the type of signal you want to capture. If you are burning away with full speed to catch some rising impulse or something, you are likely not to need peak detect. On the other hand, if you are looking at uh, a very long running process, such as our Arduino startup, and want to catch a very short intermittent event, peak detect is a must-have. And with that, I thank you for watching, and I hope that you guys have liked my clip, so please subscribe, like, leave comments, and stay tuned. You see, all of this wall is full of stuff, and more stuff is coming in every day. Stay tuned.